Don't look now, but the Rangers might finally have themselves a homegrown, good starting pitcher. Talk about Cody Bradford's dominant start to the season and the Rangers snapping the winning streak. All that and more on this episode of Locked on Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked on Rangers. Your daily Texas Rangers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are locked onto the World Series champion Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Patrick, a cripplingly addicted Texas Rangers fan and covering this team for 11 seasons, including all six as the founder and host of this podcast. Thank you all so much for making Lockdown Rangers your first listen every single day. If you're not already, you can follow me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. You can follow the show at Lockdown Rangers. Hit subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform and on YouTube, where the best way you can help grow the show is to comment nearly any single thing below. Now, before we get into Cody Bradford maybe being the prince that was promised the Rangers home grow a starting pitcher, this episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. From brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Now, the Rangers got yet another fantastic start from the Elito Alito native. I was about to say the rookie. I think he cleared all that rookie eligibility status last year because so far, the best youngster on this Rangers team this year has not been Wyatt Langford. It has not been Evan Carter. It has been the Alito kid, the Baylor kid, Cody freaking Bradford. It has been so far a series of two local Baylor kids going off in back-to-back games. Unfortunately for the Rangers, yesterday it was Shea Langelaers, the Keller High native and Baylor grad or alumnus, alum, alumnus, I should say. And then today, thankfully for the Rangers, it was the Alito native and Baylor grad, Cody freaking Bradford. Six and two-thirds innings, nearly made it seven innings. Only one walk, seven strikeouts, one unearned run. Coming off of an error, a rare error, from Josh Smith, um, Pookie Bear, as I believe Twitter is now referring to him as. Uh, But a great day from Cody freaking Bradford. Uh, uh, Three straight great starts. And this is the beginning of a trend, Cody Bradford. He looks different. This is not the same Cody Bradford that the Rangers started out there as mostly an emergency starter last year. His big league debut was, well, it was a real feed you to the wolves kind of moment. The Rangers were on a prolonged road trip and uh, he was, he was okay. He was all right against the Orioles. And then he had a start against the Braves where it's like, all right, kid, here you go. Here is the best lineup that we have seen in uh, decades and decades and decades. And he got rocked a little bit. And occasionally that will happen to Cody Bradford because when you're not throwing 95 to 99 to 117 miles an hour, it is hard to hit your stuff. But we have seen pitchers succeed and thrive while they are not throwing 95 miles an hour, while they're averaging 90.4 miles per hour on their four-seam fastball, which Cody Bradford is. But you got to have a a very, very good command of the strike zone. You've got to have multiple pitches, and they've got to set up each other well. And so far this season, Cody Bradford has done that very, very well. He's always had a pretty darn good changeup. The curveball has been much improved this year. He's throwing it a little bit slower than he did last year. Last year, was averaging around 82 miles an hour. Now it's down to about 75 in the mid-70s, as low as 72 and a half miles an hour tonight. And the slider is, has also been pretty effective, was very effective in this one. Cody Bradford got 17 whiffs in this one, seven of them off the fastball, six of them off the changeup, none off the curveball. That is more of a cold strike kind of pitch for this guy. And out of five swings on the slider tonight, Four of them were whiffs. That is a fantastic outing for the young Alito native, who has been phenomenal in all three starts this season. I I know this is coming against the A's, a team that swings and misses a lot and doesn't hit a lot of balls hard and and just doesn't do a whole lot of things super-duper well. But the other starts that he had this season, he had a really good start against the Cubs, and then he had a phenomenal start against the Astros, a team that likes to remind you that they've been to seven 
straight ALCSs. Um, some of those were even legitimate. But Cody Bradford doing this against the A's is just more of the norm for him. A 140 ERA for him so far this season. His fastball has been elite. His breaking ball has been significantly better and, and helps everything else play off of each other. He is not walking guys. He is getting guys to expand the zone. And he is painting the corners with that fastball, with that changeup. And I'm telling y'all, the greatness of Jonah Heim as a pitch framer was on full display tonight. A little bit of an extended zone, and you give a guy like Cody Bradford a little bit, an inch or two off the plate, maybe even half an inch, and he will carve all night long. We saw it a lot with Co- with uh, Martin Perez in his 2022 season. He was just phenomenal all year long. Granted, it didn't really last in 2023, but he's, he's looking back to himself. And we've seen pitchers like that, usually lefties, the ones without the most elite stuff, who, if they can hit their spots at a good rate, and usually if they have a really good changeup to neutralize those righties, those are the ones that can thrive. Now, I wish that Cody Bradford would perform whatever magic miracles <laughs> we saw from Cole Reagans uh, in the 2022 to 2023 offseason and just magically find about five miles an hour on his forcing fastball. But that wasn't the case with Cody Bradford, but he is still painting. He is still effective. I mean, the guy has a point four seven whip for the first his first two starts. He had a point four seven whip. Less than half of a base runner per inning. That's nuts. That's amazing. And there have been so many pitching prospects that have not panned out over the many, many moons. I could go on and on and on about how much I had hopes for Cody Bukel, um, Wilmer Font, you know, guys like Justin Grimm, Luke Jackson, <laughs> Roman Mendes. I mean, you can even go all the way back to, you know, 20. 20- 15, where there was uh, significant hopes on Jake Thompson or Chichi Gonzalez or, you know, maybe maybe eventually someone a little lower down the wrist. Maybe maybe Andrew Faulkner would end up working out or Jared Eikhoff, uh, RIP those hopes and dreams, or uh, maybe Johander Mendez would end up making it. Uh, alas, that has not really worked out. Or you, you go all the way to the 2019 Rangers top prospect list and you can look up guys like Joe Palumbo or hopes for... Uh, Cole Reagans, Taylor Hearn, Cole Wynn. Some of those hopes are are still hanging on by a thread. But Cody Bradford, don't look too now. Don't don't look too quickly now. Don't don't spook him. But right now he is giving the Rangers the best hope they've had at a young starting pitcher. I tweeted this out last September through three innings of a start against the Cleveland Guardians, where he was absolutely painting. I said, I've seen enough. Give this man a spot in the rotation next year. I don't care. I don't care what happens. This is the Rangers' next homegrown starter. And then I believe the next six or seven or 30 base runners <laughs> reached in a row, and Bradford didn't make it through that fourth inning. But the signs were there. And this year, with the altered stuff, with the improved curveball, with the slider that looks better, both of them at different velocities than they were last year, all of that playing up with the changeup and the fastball that was already there and the command that was already there, it... It's giving a lot of hope. And at this point, I know it's only been three starts, but he is not going to be this, the first pitcher of these Rangers' initial five in their rotation to move the bullpen. He just, he can't be. He literally cannot be. Now, Michael Lorenzen isn't rejoining this rotation tomorrow, but he he is not going to push po- Cody Bradford out of this pen. I think that whenever Lorenzen does end up coming back he had another rehab start his final rehab start today he looked fine don't look at don't look at the numbers the results don't matter as much as how he was feeling he was feeling fine i'm thinking next week at some point in this 17 game and 17 day stretch we'll see michael lorenzen in this rotation and at that point the rangers are going to have a tough choice to make but after these three starts if you're looking at who is moving to the bullpen and you want to keep winning games, you are going to keep starting Cody Bradford every fifth day or sixth day or as often as you can freaking start him because this guy so far this season looks absolutely sensational. Coming up to talk about White Langford finally getting a day off. Why? I'm really 
not concerned and anyone showing concerns over this 22 year old kid is really really jumping the gun and a positive update about max scherzer and his development coming back from the injured list right after this word from our sponsors this episode is brought to you by policy genius policy genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace it saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today with Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies, and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help talk you through it. Talk to a team of award winning agents who will walk you through the process step by step. You can easily compare quotes from America's top insurance insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. Policy Genius gives you unbiased advice from a licensed expert support team. They have no incentive to recommend you one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash lockdownmlb or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quote and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash lockdownmlb. This episode is also brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and to level it up to peak, to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Shout out to the Everydayers for making Lockdown Rangers your first listen every single day. I'll be back on Friday's show doing a mailbag, answering all of your questions about the first week and a half, nearly two weeks of this season. Now, when the Rangers unveiled their lineup for this Wednesday night game, the first thing I noticed was, oh, that's interesting. There is no Wyatt Langford in this lineup. And in yesterday's show, I was talking a little bit about, or I guess this morning show, um, Wednesday morning show, I was talking about how I've started to see Wyatt Langford get a little bit out of his approach. The first time I've really seen it, it was it was really just one at bat, and it was the last at bat of the game on Tuesday night. He took a ball one above the zone, a slider, and then there was a sweeper just outside of the zone, away from him from a righty, and he tried to pull that and was expanding the zone on a pitch that I'm pretty darn sure he knew was out of the zone and just getting a little antsy because right now it's it's not been the best start to Wyatt Langford's career at the plate. He has yet to homer in his first 11 games. He only has a couple of extra base hits. Both those came in the first series of the season. He's not hitting the ball nearly as hard as he was the first week or so, and it's been just a little bit of a struggle. But with all of that said, he's still hitting 261 with a 314 on base percentage and a 640 OPS with four walks to 10 strikeouts in 51 plate appearances. Solid numbers. Not anything horrible or, or terrible by any means, but not quite the super duper elite, amazing, unbelievable, ungodly spring training performance that he had. So the Rangers sat him down against a tough righty in Ross Stripling and put about as many lefty bats as they could get there in the lineup, and it ended up working out because the Rangers scored six runs, were able to get the win, and make it fairly comfortable for the pitching staff outside of a home run late by Yeri Rodriguez and just a little bit of treble from Jake Latz. Not too much, but just, just enough to make you sweat the good amount. But Wyatt Langford's start to the season is is not any cause for concern. Like I saw on Twitter, some maybe this is just me blowing up one person's tweet of, of freaking out about Wyatt Langford and saying the Rangers are actually having soft contact because it's just Wyatt Langford hitting balls into the ground. And, you know, this rookie hasn't hit a home run in his first 11 games, so he, he must be a scrub. And maybe that's me freaking out about nothing. It probably is. But but still, I feel like it's it's worth noting that 
I'm pretty sure Wyatt Langford will be the first person to tell you that he's not hitting super well this season. I guarantee you that. I also guarantee you that there is nobody working harder about getting Wyatt Langford back on track and hitting his first big league home run and then his second and his third and his fourth, um, hopefully in succession, maybe even all in one game if we're getting a little greedy and ahead of ourselves. But this is not something to worry about for this kid. I mean, you go back and look at the insane route that he took to the big leagues of, you know, not being a highly touted kid recruited out of high school, out of Trenton, Florida, having four plate appearances as a freshman, bursting onto the scene as a sophomore, and absolutely crushing it as a junior, getting drafted fourth overall, and taking about five whole minutes until he made the big leagues. Goes into his first big league spring training camp without a guaranteed roster spot and just has the best spring I think I've ever seen someone have in a Texas Rangers uniform. And oh, by the way, he had 200 minor league plate appearances. I was watching a little bit of the Orioles game because Jackson Holiday, the unfortunate consensus top one prospect in baseball, uh, unfortunate because it's not White Langford, Evan Carter. I have my own disagreements there, but still a fantastic prospect who is 20 years old and already in the big leagues. And the Orioles broadcast are talking about how insane it is that the Jackson Holiday made it to the big leagues and so few plate appearances. They're, they're saying, oh, you know, it hasn't been since guys like Ronald Acuna Jr. or Juan Soto that someone has made it to the big leagues with this few plate appearances. And while it is true that Juan Soto made it to the big leagues pretty quickly and Jackson Holiday made it to the big leagues pretty quickly, you really don't have to go back that far to Juan Soto to see someone with this few of minor league plate appearances make it to the big leagues. You got to go back all the way to opening day because White Langford had 200 minor league plate appearances. Jackson Holiday had 727, which is nuts. Juan Soto had 512. Now, granted, Juan Soto was 19 when he made his major league debut. Jackson Holiday was 20. And White Langford was 22. And White Langford had a couple years, actually three years of college, two of those years where he played. Jackson Holiday was drafted out of high school, and Juan Soto was signed as a 16-year-old by the Nationals. But still... It is worth noting for all these guys who, by the way, Holiday went over in his big league debut, had a couple of strikeouts because he's a 20-year-old kid and the big leagues is very hard. And White Langford is 22 years old and the big leagues are very hard. And both of these guys are very, very impressive to get up to the big leagues as quickly as they have. But also, it's the big leagues. Not everybody is going to have an Evan Carter first couple of months of their big league career. That's why it was so marvelous. That's why it was so phenomenal. That's why it was so just breathtaking that Evan Carter jumps into the big leagues. And even Evan Carter struggling, struggled a little bit the first week of this season. But for Evan Carter to do what he did in 20-something games of the regular season and, what was it, 16 19 games of the playoffs. I, I forget how many uh, at this point. Maybe it was, it was 15. I think, 15, yes, 15 games of the playoffs. Um, 16? I, I don't know. doesn't matter. <laughs> the fact that Evan Carter was able to do that is the aberration, not the norm. And, again, with all of these trends that are happening early on this season with the Rangers not hitting the ball super hard not hitting a whole lot of home runs just yet not getting that many extra base hits in general uh, we saw quite a few in today's game thankfully some from Adolfo Garcia from Marcus Simeon from Evan Carter and from Josh Smith as well um, we're starting to see that trend reverse itself a little bit but again like with all these things we're 12 games into the season so um, let's put our, our brakes on, let's put our calming down caps on, because I feel like in general there's been a lot of unrest, but I feel it in myself too, just remembering what it's like to pace yourself for the 162-game marathon that is the regular season, because the last meaningful baseball that we had uh, about six months ago was when the Rangers won the World Series, and uh, rightly so, every single one of those playoff games is stressful, do or die with every single pitch, but it's not really the case for the regular season. And even though it hasn't been the best start, even even Corey Seager is, is not really getting into the ball as much as I'm sure he would like. But again, he's still hitting, what, 341 with an 865 OPS, which before this game was north of 900. He's 
they had a couple of pitches that I thought were right down the middle that Corey Seager normally absolutely drills, um, but he did not do that in today's game uh, against his uh, old friend, Ross Stripling, former Dodgers teammate. But again, it's all a small sample size. This offense is doing the right things. And a great day at the plate from Adoles Garcia, who I just talked about in yesterday's show, being worried about his approach, getting too swing happy, not taking those walks. Well, what did he do? He went three for three with a couple of doubles and a walk because that's Adoles Garcia, a guy who is a very freaking good hitter, just like Wyatt Langford and Evan Carter will be. Coming up, we'll talk about the positive updates that we got from Max Scherzer and a bullpen move that I feel like is going to happen any minute now, right after this word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's it's nearly playoff time for NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is the place to bet on every single game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and so easy to use. The Mavericks tonight, I believe they clinched the division. The Stars, I believe either if they haven't already, they are about to clinch their division. It is going to be a long playoff ride for hopefully both those Dallas teams. Maybe we will make it three Dallas championships all in one year in 2024 of a Stars, Rangers, and Mavs championship all in 2024. Maybe we'll get a little bit jealous, but get in on the action. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Now, the Rangers got some good news after a bullpen session from Max Scherzer this week. He threw a 40-pitch bullpen session and is feeling great he is feeling amazing he is feeling no lingering effects from that back surgery the arm feels healthy the back feels healthy the shoulder elbow the whole head shoulders knees and toes everything is feeling healthy happy and thriving from the late 30s i believe 38 or 39 year old max scherzer and he is progressing very quickly towards a rehab assignment. He will probably throw another bullpen next week. And then after that, it'll be a rehab assignment. And so Max Scherzer could be back way sooner than anticipated. He is on a normal buildup like a regular spring training for him. He is not fast-tracking anything. He is not trying to do more than his body says that he can do. But he is still feeling great. This is a guy who has been one of the least injury-prone pitchers of our game, of our age. And he is, you know, in his late 30s, and he's really only had a couple of injury-prone seasons at all, which is just nuts because I was just talking about it on the last episode of this show about how insanely frequent pitcher injuries are and how everyone is up in arms because, you know, Garrett Cole is hurt this year or because, you know, Spencer Strider is hurt this year. And I'm I get it, and it sucks for our game. It really does. But Max Scherzer having a 16-year career so far where he's only had a couple of seasons where he wasn't insanely durable and insanely healthy and pitching over 170 or over 180 or 200 innings. I mean, the guy has 2,800 career innings in 16 years. He debuted in 2008 as a 23-year-old, and now... He's in his age 39 season. He is turning 40 on July 27th of this year. So he is 20 or 39 years old. Um, I I think maybe when he comes back, he will become my favorite 39 year old taking that mantle from David Robinson, who had a really nice night tonight, just facing one batter and getting out of that last inning of work um, and getting out of a little bit of a jam. Um, but still, I am so excited to have Max Scherzer back in this rotation, having him come back and be anywhere near the version of himself that he was last year, which was a 3.20 ERA pitcher in eight starts, 45 innings, still striking out more than a batter per nine, 10 and a half Ks per nine last year with the Rangers and looked very, very effective. And if the Rangers can get him back, I'm assuming around a month is 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 maybe the the median time that he would come back but the Rangers didn't place him on the 60-day IL to start the season so it means they thought he was going to come back at least you know before May 28th or 25th or so 
that's about where the 60-day IL you could get off as soon as you were put on it at the start of the season. And so the Rangers were optimistic that he would return before then. He might not, but he might. The initial the initial prognostication was around June. And if the Rangers can get, you know, four months of Scherzer, heck, if they can get four and a half months of Scherzer, which is about what they'd be getting if he came back in what, mid May, which seems like the likelihood. It, it, the earliest I think he'd be back is like May tenth, so a month from today. That feels like the absolute earliest. If he's already on you know, throwing 40 pitches, then maybe it'll be three weeks. I have absolutely no idea what Max Scherzer is going to take to be fully built back up. I'm not quite good at doing that calendar math in my head on the fly as I'm recording. But it is great news for the Rangers. It's great news that he is progressing. They're going to have you know two additions to this rotation that has already been mostly pretty good. Dane Dunning has been pretty solid. Nathan Eovaldi has been fantastic. Cody Bradford has been exceptional. And, well, John Gray and Andrew Heaney have had their rocky moments for sure. They've shown themselves to be capable back-end starting rotation members um, throughout their careers. But you're not adding Max Scherzer to throw him in the pen. That's that's not going to happen. You didn't sign Michael Lorenzen to start the season in the pen before you get back um, before you get back Scherzer, before you get back Manley, before you get back DeGrom. You signed them to start. and or Well, in Scherzer's case, you traded for him to start. But this team is in a very, very good place with their roster, with this fantastic update. And uh, another hurt player who is, is seemed to be come back a little bit, um, well, right around when we thought, still about a week away, I think, for Nathaniel Lowe, but a nice night for him on the broadcast in the booth doing play-by-play. Nathaniel Lowe, who has apparently been bugging Dave Raymond about doing play-by-play for uh, at least a couple years, it seems like. It's been a while that he has had the bug to not only be on the broadcast, but do an inning of play-by-play. He did so tonight and was absolutely delightful on the broadcast. Shout out to Nathaniel Lowe. Hope he gets back soon. Was running the bases and taking some swings this week and, and felt pretty good coming back from that oblique strain. So that is good news for the Rangers lineup that is... Well, it is depleted, but it is still scoring about six runs a game, which if you've got a depleted offense down two all-star caliber players, have Corey Seager, who is, I don't think, quite fully healthy, but still hitting, you know, 340 and, you know, still getting Jonah Heim fully back into form, which, by the way, he had some pretty darn good at-bats in this one. I was also a little worried about the quality of Jonah Heim's at-bats to start the season. But, hey, it seems like everybody is figuring things out at the right time, and that is an encouraging thing for this Rangers squad that is only getting healthier and only getting better. And, by the way, despite all the weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth at the Rangers, still only being two games above 500 at this point, they're still first in the AL West in... Don't look at the Astros, but uh, look at the Astros if you want to laugh a little bit and what they've done this these last couple of games they have lost against the Kansas City Royals. But the Rangers, not everything is going perfectly, especially for this pen. They have had some issues, and, and so far, the last man, lowest man on the totem pole so far this season has been Yeri Rodriguez. He's got an ERA of 635, and while he hasn't been horrific, he he hasn't quite been that consistent guy that we saw in spring training. And because he has a minor league option this year, I would imagine that maybe even by, maybe not tonight, maybe after this game against the A's, he will be optioned. Prob- he's probably going to be the first guy optioned to AAA because he has those options. Jonathan Hernandez has been rehabbing since uh, basically spring training. He has pitched in four games for the AAA Round Rock Express. Just one walk in those four innings, three hits, four strikeouts for him. He is looking like he is just about ready to come back, and he has been a little bit more consistent of a version of Yeri Rodriguez than we have seen from Yeri, as inconsistent as we've seen Hernandez at times. Last year was an unmitigated disaster for Hernandez, but we know the, the stuff is still there. I think he can still be an elite back end of the bullpen kind of guy. And with Josh Spores on the IL for now, the Rangers need every single one of those guys that they can get. I mean, every single member of that bullpen needs to be worth his salt. Somebody that you can throw in a game, whether you are you know up 10 runs or 
or down three runs or if you're in a tight spot, if it is a high leverage situation, or even if you're down a couple runs with this offense, you always want bullpen guys who can keep you in games and can keep things from spiraling out of control because with this offense, this team is never out of game. So every single spot in this pen is crucial. And I think it's not long before we see Jonathan Hernandez back in this bullpen. But again, the quality of at-bats for the Rangers in this one, having some great at-bats with runners in scoring position, not get doing too much with the long ball, still a little bit slow on their long ball start to the season, which is kind of weird because this is not a team that plays in a cold weather environment where it takes some time to start hitting those home runs. I think just the slow start to the season is is something you can see with a championship hangover. They have seen, they have felt the effects of having these different guys who have had such long, such a long season last year, the longest season you can possibly have of playing in literally every single game. Uh, it hasn't really affected Marcus Simeon because he's the insane Iron Man, but Corey Seager is still coming back from a surgery. You still have your corner infielders on the IL. Josh Young is going to be out for a couple of months, but hey, it's the next man up, and and so far these next men have been doing fantastic. Jared Walsh stepping in, a couple of walks in this one, and a run scored, and has been running the bases as as fast as he can. I feel like there's been quite a few sends where he has been pretty aggressive. Tony Beasley has been pretty aggressive and it has ended up scoring a run there. But Josh Smith having some fantastic at-bats so far. Travis Jankowski having a DH day. And even Lily Tavares with a multi-hit day in this one. Everyone is stepping up in this on this team and it is only getting better from here. A pretty encouraging start to the season despite some of these early bumps we have seen in the road hoping that white langford gets the day on in this finale on thursday afternoon hoping that he can get off the snide get his first major league home run because this guy adjusts so quickly i think the day off will be good for him just to, to give him a day to rest his mind and come up against this oakland a's team and hopefully get himself on the board and the rangers can get themselves that serious win that they very much would like to have against these Oakland A's. But that's going to do it for today's show. Thank you all so much for listening and subscribing. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy World Series champion Texas Rangers baseball.